So today you have a double treat because firstly I'm going to explain why SVGs are so important and then I'm going to show you some tips and techniques on how to use them in Adobe Illustrator. Then towards the very end of the video there's an actual tutorial on how to make a vector circular gradient shape as you can see on screen now. So SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics and we're going to explore this a little bit later. It's one of the main assets and reasons why we designers love SVG so much. Having graphics that are scalable cannot be underestimated in this industry. It's really, really crucial and important to have the scalability at your disposal. SVGs actually allow you to edit the code of a design, changing the design itself within the coding, as opposed to actually working on the visual artwork. This is hugely powerful and useful for programmers and designers in UI or UX design. This asset alone is something remarkable for SVGs. SVGs are best used for web-based graphics in case you're wondering if they're you know, useful for print as well. So another really neat asset for SVGs is that you're gonna see later in the video, you can actually export separate objects from an artboard as an SVG. So for example, I can export a single line of text as a SVG without the rest of my design being exported. When working in Adobe Illustrator, we sometimes use transparency and blend modes and SVGs offer full support and usage of these techniques, which is handy and helpful for web-based graphics alone. It's another reason why the SVG is such a powerful file format to utilize and to save your artwork in. One key feature before we get into the tutorial is that the SVGs generally speaking are smaller file size than JPEG, PDF and so forth. This can be handy for various reasons if the quality remains high of course. We all want smaller file sizes on our workstations and computers, I'm pretty sure of that. So now I'm going to show you a real life example of how to use SVGs in Adobe Illustrator. And before we get into the actual vector circle design tutorial, there's a quick word from today's sponsor which is Storyblocks. They're an amazing stock imagery, footage, audio, background and after effects website. They even have 360 degree footage which is something pretty rare and it's really really awesome these days. So let's check that out right now. So as you can see, you've got a whole host of 360 degree uh, stock footage that you can use for your projects. And on the slider bar here, you can, you know, refine your search according to duration, categories and so forth. There are so many options here on Storyblocks and it really is a great choice for your projects in terms of stock footage, imagery, audio and much, much, much more. This circular design you can see on the screen now, I actually have a full tutorial on this video at the very end, so stick around if you want to see that. But let's learn about exporting SVGs. Now I've added some text off to the side and we will see later how you can export single objects as SVGs. To export an entire artboard as an SVG, come up to File, Export and then choose the SVG option. A window is going to appear and in the SVG options choose settings and select minify to generate SVG code with minimal IDs, idents, lines and also white spaces. Now that saved my entire design as an SVG quite simply. However, what if I want to save just the circular object that you can learn about in just a moment? Well, head up to file again, but this time go into export selection. Make sure to select the object first and foremost. Repeat the same process and the objects will be saved as a separate SVG. So 
So now it's time to learn how to make that circular vector design you've seen throughout the entire video, if you've never seen it on my channel before. In the color picker menu, copy the hex color code at the bottom with command or control C. We're going to use this soon. But for now, cover the entire artboard with the same color using the rectangle tool, M being the shortcut on your keyboard. And then simply lock it down in place with command or control 2. Now, press L for the ellipse tool and then click and drag whilst holding down shift to generate a perfect circle. Now choose a gradient fill in the bottom left of your screen and then click on one side of the gradient like so. Make sure to choose the RGB mode in the top right corner so we can then paste in the hex color code with command or control V. Now this is just so that this part of the gradient matches and blends into the background perfectly. The other side of the gradient needs to be a kind of light grey colour, but of course you can choose whatever colours that you want to use. As you see later, I experimented with blues and purples. Now, we're going to make use of Illustrator's automated actions for the next step in this vector design. So go ahead and open up the actions panel here. and then click New Action in the top right window. Illustrator is now recording your every single move, and don't freak out, it's not the NSA, but just copy the circle with Command or Control C, and then paste a duplicate with Command or Control F. You can see in the Actions panel, my steps are being listed, but then transform the new shape by reducing its scale by 75% here. Finally, rotate the circle by a certain degrees like so. Once you've done that, hit stop in the actions panel. You've now saved that action from start to finish. And all we need to do now is to select the new circle and then click play. Illustrator is going to repeat every single step that we just made over and over again. That's pretty neat. Of course, you can add or use any colors that you wish but here is the first circular vector design. If you want to see more content by myself here at Satori Graphics, make sure to like, share and subscribe my videos on social media and do click that bell icon if you want to keep up to date with all of my videos. Until next time guys, design a future today. Peace.